What's up YouTube? My name is Lazy Tryhard and today we are going to be starting and you heard me right, starting a new series uh using the results that you guys gave me. Uh you guys were not uh you all were dead even. Uh I had 13 responses which uh would usually mean that you'd have like a tip scale or whatever, one would be favored or the other. But no, one of you little frickers skipped the question. So now we have six people um, who want to do a platform side scroller and half who want to do a Pokemon uh, like RPG, which is kind of like a top down uh, version, which again, I can do both. And so, therefore, that's what I'm going to do. I'm going to hopefully be able to teach you guys concepts uh, for both of them by doing two separate projects. Uh, but today, what I thought I'd do was uh, set them both up. So, for, for any game that you develop, um, you want to have kind of like a basis on how you want to start. For any game, uh, I'm going to show you guys today what I do for uh, my for every project that I do. And the, I, it doesn't really involve the tutorial because I kind of did this with a bunch of gross classes and I didn't really organize it in any fashion. So today what I'm going to do is I'm going to lay the foundation uh, for both projects and then have two separate series, series I, series, series that focus on uh, both different sides uh, of this cute little coin that we call 2D graphics. So we're going to get started right up. So go to your libgdx project setup. And if you don't have libgdx, which you better have it if you've been following these tutorials, uh, what you want to do is go to uh, the libgdx website, download libgdx.0.9.8, and then click the gdx setup UI. And once you're there, you have this cute little screen, and you're going to hit Create. Now, uh, again, we've been over this, so I shouldn't have to do this. So the first, I'm just going to call it, um, since I kind of already have the winter project, that's what I call it, was going to call it originally, before I started working on it, we're just going to call this one the YouTube Winter Project. Uh, and then I'll know that that's how it works. So we're going to call the package project basic thing and then game class I always call it the libgdx game uh, so because you have again just go with it roll with me here uh, so you pick a place to save it I always save it to inside that folder and you hit launch and it decompresses and it cleans everything up and then boom uh, so now you're gonna go to Java you're gonna import you guys already know this if you watched my first one which like 10,000 you guys have which oh, thank you so much uh, but then it imports them and we don't want this one because that one was rubbish and you're gonna see these three you're gonna hit import and you're gonna get an error it's like oh crap my Android project isn't working well that's pretty easy to fix go to properties go to um, Android it should start off at resource go to Android and I don't have 4.4 yet I need to download that but Select 4.4 if you have it, 4.3 normally uh, for me because I'm not updated and that fixes the problems, bada bing, bada boom. So next you're going to want to click on this so we can just uh, run it, hit the circle triangle thingy and just run it so that now it saves it as main 3. So boom, perfect, right? So we got this cute little class uh, called libgdx game and it has what we did. We're going to delete everything in it because like, like I said, you can't, this is gross. Um, if I could get this scroll down, all right, there we go. Uh, dispose, uh, render. Actually, yeah, yeah, yeah. So what you're gonna first want to do is super dot render because that renders everything. Uh, actually, that's not what you're gonna want to do first. What you're gonna want to do first is change this to extends game because we're not making an application, we're making a game, and you're gonna import that, and nothing should really be too uh, tiresome in that. So you're gonna get rid of all of these variables, and like I said or I haven't really said this yet, but I'm going to say it now. This will be online hopefully by tonight. Uh, I can't guarantee that, but uh, most of the code will either be up today or tomorrow. So we're just going to leave leave it at that. And you're going to want to instantiate the game class itself and just call it game, which is this class. Um, pretty self-explanatory. Uh, game equals this, because you're just setting it equal to the class. And on create, what we want to do is right now we're just going to set the screen to a new play screen. We haven't made the play screen yet, but we've done this before, and we're just going to give it the game. So it's going to be like, what the heck, what do you do with this uh, uh, game class? So we're going to make a new folder, or a new package, com.me.screens. 
and it's going to have it's going to hold the uh, play screen so you can go to here no don't change that uh, you're just going to create a play class and it's going to go into the um, you're going to put it frick in the there we go uh, in the screens package and you're going to call it play screen and it's going to work and you're going to have a cute little class now that now implements screen so uh, now we just have to import oh it takes that that's what we have to do uh, next you're going to want to do the following public play screen um, it's going to take a libgdx game and you're going to also have to make a global variable uh, that deals with this as well so you're going to do the same there this dot game equals game so um, you have to import it that's why right oh that's why libgdx game uh, then you can import that stupid mistakes um, then that should work and we get an error here we shouldn't anymore that's good too so we have a play screen we have a libgdx uh, game so it immediately sets the screen to this play screen so what you want well so now that we have this play screen how do we want to deal with it this is going to be a new concept for you guys uh, so stay with me here we're going to create a new package and we're going to call it com.me dot um, world and we're going to do the following. We're going to create two classes. Uh, we're going to create this thing called a world renderer and a thing called a world updater. Um, and what these two classes are going to do is they're going to deal with the game itself. The world renderer is going to deal with the drawing of the game, so like the sprite batches, the cameras, and stuff like that that deal with the visual aspects, while the world updater deals with like updating the player based on their position and stuff like that. So we're going to have two methods in here. One of them is going to be a public void update, and in the world renderer, we're going to do a public void render, and it's going to render everything. So you're going to have to create, obviously, two constructors for these things. And you're going to want to do the same thing we've done before. We let, we, you want to keep um, pretty good consistency with your uh, constructors. So we're just going to give it the game and um, like we have before. And it's not a screen. These are two separate classes that don't implement any sort of screens. They're classes on them by themselves. And that might be a little confusing. Uh, I can explain it, but... Right now, I just want to get these basic classes down. So we can just copy all of this in here and put it in there. Oh, of course, I already made it. Um, we're going to put this out there, this in here, and we're going to just format everything. That didn't, why are you going to format? Okay, well, Control A, Source, Format. Okay, wonderful. Um, that didn't do anything. There we go, that's why. Right, right, right. Okay, good. So, that goes there. This is off. I don't care. Whatever, we'll figure it out later. I'm just going to do it one more time. Format. Yay! Okay. Oh, that's why. Da, 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 da. Gosh, stupid, stupid, stupid. Um, I put that in the render method. And now, it's just awful. It's just awful. So... Don't do that. Um, do that, and that's why it doesn't look awful anymore. And we're going to ch have to change this to World Renderer. So I'm trying to go really fast uh, because this is all pretty much like common. It's not common knowledge, but I'm so used to doing it that I should have this down uh, lickety split. So what you're going to do in this play screen class, now that we've created a World Renderer and a World Updater, is you're going to want to make instances of them. World Updater, uh, we're just going to call it Updater and world renderer and just call it render -er. um, you're going to have to put both of those uh, in there and we can either do this in the constructor I'm going to do it in the show method just because that's how I like to do it uh, and it's going to do you're going to have to instantiate both of them so new world updater and it's going to take the game and you're going to do a renderer and it's going to equal new world renderer -er. And it's gonna take a rend or it's gonna take the game as well. So, all right, awesome. Now what do we do? Well, since this is the game class, uh, the play class, we just want to do the following: uh, updater dot update and render 
dot render. So that's the only two things we're going to put in this method uh, because it's going to update the game and then it's going to draw the game. And it's going to this is obviously going to have a lot of work in both classes, uh, but for right now that's uh, basically how we're going to do it. So uh, we haven't really done much, but let's. Uh, I'm just going to show you that this works. So right now we um, put a sprite batch in here, and we're going to call it batch. Um, and in this constructor, what you're going to want to do is you're going to want to initialize that batch equals new sprite batch. And let's just do that. And once you're in the render, you can do what, like we've always done batch dot begin and batch dot end. Uh, so not too much coolio things going on here. Uh, we're not going to really deal with the world updater class today, uh, but just to show you what it would look like if we did like a player player um, and we initialize the player, uh, we do like a player dot update and stuff like that. We put like the iterators and the um, array lists and stuff like that to deal with all the updates and the collision detection and all that fun stuff. Uh, but that we're going to save that for uh, the next video, which, again, we'll get there when we get there. So for right now, we're just going to, let's see, what do I have uh, in the winter project that I can just render to show you guys that this all works? Actually, I'm just going to run it right now, make sure I don't get any null pointers. All right, no null pointers. Sweet. Awesome. Um, let's just render something really quickly. Let's render this character sprite sheet. Um, I know it's like, it's going to give me the sprite, it's gonna, I'm, we're literally going to render a sprite sheet. Uh, so it's going to look kind of bad. But, uh, no matter. We're just going to do batch dot draw, uh, oh gosh, not that big of a method. Draw new texture, it's going to take a gdx dot internal, or no, dot files dot internal. Um, and it's going to be called character sprite g dot png and to import that um, no then you're done there and we're just going to put like uh, let's put like a hundred a hundred and this should work it should draw um, unless oh we have to deal with this stupid uh, desktop thing because you get sometimes you'll get this error texture uh, must have a width and power or must be powers of two that's because we have we haven't uh, you set the, the following setting to true uh, CFG dot uh, use oh, or use GL uh, 2.0 and you can set it to true uh, that just deals with that error I'm not gonna deal with that. So we have this cute little sprite sheet. The th the uh, renderer has rendered it from the play screen. We're still, this is still, um, again, this is still the play screen, um, but we're just rendering it in another class. Don't get too afraid of that. That's just coming from the renderer.render, which we can go to from here, and batch.begin, batch.draw. So realistically, this would look like uh, we do player.draw instead. Um, and then give it like you know the parameters and the size or whatever so but again we're going to save that for the next tutorial when we start dealing with these different types of games so uh, pss, what else do we got um... Did I forget anything oh we're going to do one more thing and that's create this thing called an entity manager um, I, I don't know I'm sorry I'm throwing a lot of new terms at you guys but I think you guys can handle it so we're going to do the following uh, we're going to create a new package, and we're going to call it entity, or, I'm sorry, com.me.entity. Um, and, and what an entity is, is it's basically anything that takes a position and a size, and it has a texture. So basically anything in the game, uh, whether that be like a jar of clay, a uh, platform, a uh, player, it could be a living entity, it could be a dead entity, it could be an inanimate object, it could be whatever. Uh, but anything that just deals with um, the, just anything that deals with the overall game. A game is composed of a bunch of entities, um, whether you like it or not. Um, so we're going to call it an abstract class because this in its, we're not going to initialize an entity. Uh, this is going to take a bunch of different, we're going to make a bunch of different classes out of this entity class, but 
Um, this just makes it a lot easier to create monsters um, because like if you create a bunch of different monsters you don't want to have to say oh I want this height and this width a billion times uh, that's what the entity manager will deal with it'll set all these positions and sizes for you so we're gonna do the following we're gonna do a float yeah let's do a float X float Y float uh, width and float height so um, actually hmm I'm going to keep it at that right now. I'm I'm trying to decide how I want to deal with the textures, uh, merely because we can't serialize um, textures, um, which is just like saving it onto a disk for later time. But that's again, if we really get, you know, let's just do the textures now. So texture, uh, texture. Uh, so you're going to have to import that, and you're going to have to make all these variables uh, x. X and Y are the coordinates, obviously the width and the height are the, obviously the uh, size of the actual thing. And we're going to also, uh, hmm, um, we're not going to, we're going to have this thing, we're going to have a bounds rectangle, um, but we're going to, hmm, I'm not sure, because this is going to change. Um, for the platformer, we're going to use box 2D uh, as our physics engine, mostly because I don't want to deal like learn how to implement gravity and stuff like that, um, where I can just have box 2D deal with that. So right now, uh, keep this as it is. You can keep it. We we probably will remove it when we create the platformer, um, but for right now, we'll just keep it in there. So this dot y equals y, this dot width equals width, and this dot height equals height, and this bounds rectangle is gonna uh, equal a new rectangle and we're gonna have uh, conveniently all the methods laid out for us so uh, we've gone through a lot I'm gonna set these getters and setters really quickly and that should be um, right now all we're gonna deal actually that's not all we're gonna deal with we're gonna deal with one more thing and it's gonna be really easy um, but we're gonna make a public void update and this is going to deal with every entity, no matter what happens, we're going to update this part. And we're going to update the bounds. Because if our player is moving, then our camera needs to be moving, our, our rectangles need to be moving as well, um, in order to keep uh, things realistic and collision detection to be accurate. So we're going to do bounds.set, um, we're just going to set it to a new rectangle, to its new x, new y, width, and height. Um, again, just something we have to deal with. Uh, don't worry, don't stress out too much about that. Uh, so because we might actually change that. You never know. Um, oh hey, never mind. I got an email. But besides that, that's again. This is the basic setup for most of my games. We have the entity manager, which deals with every single type of entity you could possibly have, whether that be an item, a tree, a person, an enemy, whatever. These are each um, everything we do in this game is going to have uh, these characteristics. So that that's what the entity manager deals with. We'll add more to it as in the upcoming tutorials. Um, the screens, obviously, we've dealt with that before. We have main menus, uh, we have settings menus, we have screen like the play screen, which we've dealt with. Uh, the world manager manages the game world itself. The world renderer dealing with the drawing, and the world updater dealing with the game logic. Uh, and then finally, we've already done this before, but this. LibGDX just makes a game, just makes the game itself possible. So, again, I'm so sorry I went so fast through that. It's, wow, 18 minutes. Um, but that's the basic architecture for the game, or for both games. So, in the upcoming tutorials, I think I'm going to have just two playlists with two different series, and this is going to be like the first episode for both of them. Um, but thank you so much for watching. Uh, if you have any comments or feedback, or what do you want to see in the platformer or the top-down game just hit me up I'd love to hear your guys' talk and thank you so much for watching please rate subscribe comment uh, and I'll see you guys in the next video